careful. So even though people aren't in the waiting room, we're live on Facebook right now. All right. <laughs> Hi, everyone. <laughs> See what I mean? And this is why I like want to do the music because there's this huge delay. How do you know when you're on? How do you know that you're on? Go to um, go to Zoom. Minimize that. Minimize this. Uh huh. And go back to Zoom. This is Zoom. Mm -hmm. Oh. Yep. And right. maximize that. Okay. And now if you want to. Oh, it says live on Facebook. Yep, oh, there we go. Nice. Hello, everybody. Hello, We're everybody. here. We're getting ready to start the Gather with Danny Bubby Facebook um, cooking class for Thanksgiving. This is Tanya Murray, and I'm Hello. Danny Bubby. And so happy that you're joining us on Facebook. But we've got a whole group of people. Um, we want to put this in gallery view. Um, so let's see. We have to admit you, Belay, if you can do that. Oh, okay. Yeah and yourself. get us into gallery view so those of you on facebook who might be joining us um it's not on gallery it's on speaker i think these oh sorry <laughs> there we go all right so sorry i just don't want my face in it. i was trying to turn it around well you can turn it around but look it's not you and your technology my phone is not. This has been a week for my, technology. I know, but for sure, really, none of it has been seamless. Yeah, can I use yours? Unbelievable! You this seriously? There you go. Okay, try it again now. Oh, now it's working. I just, I just. Oh, yeah. Roseanne, we'll let you in. Let Roseanne in. Hey, Roseanne. Hi, Roseanne. Hi, sweetheart. Roseanne, you're there, babe. Roseanne. She's prepping. She is. Roseanne is going to be doing strawberries with us. Roseanne, we're here. How are you? <laughs> She's getting there. She's working on it. Okay. Let us know when you're there, Roseanne. Can you hear us? Whoop. Oops. You lost us. Delay. It's gone. Why? you're not in no i have to join again okay roseanne can you hear us here admit yourself okay we can't hear you though okay, here we go okay okay we're live. we're live so all of that is live we're already live on facebook there we go so on the nanny oh. Bubby facebook page okay how are you you all ready to rock and roll i am Good. So we're just chatting along. We're, we're, I just, you know, all of us popping in are live on Facebook. So um, just wanted to tell you that. Here's Tanya. Say hi, hi Tanya. Tanya. Good to see you. I'm excited to see what you have to show us today. Yay. I love seeing new recipes. So let me tell you the story about how uh, Roseanne found out that she was going to be doing this today. <laughs> <laughs> she got an email from you? <laughs> no, I was live on Facebook cooking and i was promoing this and i said and i'm i'm gonna ask roseanne to do her strawberries for us but she's here right now so roseanne <laughs> will you do the strawberries no pressure no pressure at all <laughs> it was kind of funny so let me ask you a question can you hear us okay because we've got a new mic situation going on yeah i can hear you fine that is awesome wowzer yay <laughs> That is great. That's great. So we're just waiting for everybody to join. We had, oh my gosh, almost 20 people who signed up. So wow. for Arlene, um, okay, Mary Romitti is trying to get in. Hey, Mary. There we go. Mary, my best friend from Michigan. Oh, is that Aww. how Mary found us? Mary, there you are. Oh, my best. Is she? Oh my gosh. Mary is the best too. I missed what? her last time. Mary. Mary can you hear us? Oh. Not yeah, yet. Her. We can't hear you, but you can hear us. No, can't hear you now. I could read your lips. That's how I knew you said that. <laughs> unmute. Unmute. Can you unmute, Mary? Please. Uh, how, how about if you give me the give me the mouse? There we go. Oh, that's the unmute right here. Yep. Uh, yeah. 
looking at the mystery person named 2018. Oh, who is that? Who that is? I'm looking forward to your cranky. Honey, how are you? You know, nobody can hear us when we first go in. So, hey guys. Okay, so Mary, speak and let me hear you. Nope, we still can't hear you. We still can't hear you. Tawny, can you hear us? Yay. Okay, we're unmuting you so you can talk. I've asked to unmute. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. How are you? I'm trying to find a, not a glare here. Okay. Oh, that's okay. Find your spot. Mary, we can't help you. You're not muted, but we cannot hear you. So you have to unmute. Tawny and everybody, we are doing this for Tawny because God bless Tawny. When I had my bad juju moment, oh. Tawny was the only one that signed up. And I promised Tawny oh. either she would be coming over here to do this oh. or we would reschedule. And because of you, Tawny, we've rescheduled. Yay, so Tawny. Hey, thank you. So everybody, we're streaming this live right now on Facebook. And the way that we're going to do this is uh, keep your phone or keep your device in gallery view. Keep it in gallery view. Because VLA, hi there, who's behind you, Tawny? Um, this is Olivia. Hi. Oh, my, my little girl. Oh my gosh, she looks just like you did at that oh. age. Oh, that's so cute. That's so awesome. Um, and so Vile's phone, which is where? Over here. That is going to be the close-up phone. So Roseanne, when you do your uh, strawberries, you're going to want to, if you can, you know, tilt your phone down. I don't know if your husband's there, if he can like go tight for you. I'm on a stand. Okay, cool. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so when you do that, you can just, you know, tilt it down. <laughs> okay. All right. Tilt back up. All right. Do you might want to call Mary and help her get her phone? Oh. There's Mary. Mary. I will put here. Mary, can you hear me? Uh, recipes. No, all right. I'm going to mute Mary because I think she's. I don't know if it goes side. Oh, yeah. Well, no, I can't. Well. Okay. She's muted for now. Okay. Mary, can you hear us? Just wave your hand if you can hear us. Okay. We can't hear you. But you could type in the chat if you know how to type in the chat you can type your question. In fact, I'm gonna to go to chat and put the chat up just in case anybody wants to go there. Oh, thank you. Keeping me from totally messing this whole thing up. Oh, she chat. She said thank you already. Okay, she did, <laughs> okay. All right. I'm going to move this. We'll put this over here, okay. So we're waiting for others to join, but we are streaming live on the Nanny Bubby Facebook page. So if you're okay with that, raise your hand. Okay, so tell me in the chat, what are you, um, tell me what are you choosing to cook? Tawny, what did you choose to cook with us today? Well, I'll just talk. Okay. Um, <laughs> we're gonna do, well, today we're gonna do the um, cranberry sauce and the Brussels sprouts, but we're oh. gonna walk today and cook later. Oh, okay, good idea. All right, okay, Mary, what are you gonna do today? What are you cooking with us? And I love that Olivia is joining us too. I'm so excited, I'm so excited. Okay, Mary, are you typing? Oh, strawberries, since I have email and since I have- Meat and potato, guys. Meat. Okay, cool, okay. And Roseanne, other than your strawberries, what are you doing? Cranberries and the soup. Yeah, okay, all right. We don't have anyone tackling the lasagna? Well, yeah. <laughs> you know what? Lindsay was gonna tackle the lasagna okay. and she went to the grocery store to buy it. And you know what? She is so new at all of this. Like she's a young mom and she's never really cooked a lot and she couldn't even follow the recipe. Like she just didn't know what happened. 
Oh, she couldn't well, figure out what to today it'll yeah. help clarify everything. Yeah. It is a little bit of a daunting recipe at first. Yeah, it's it seems like it until you drill down in it. Yeah. It gets, yeah. But it's like hiking. It's like hiking Kilimanjaro. Well, not that difficult. No, it's not that bad. <laughs> I would have made it, but I'm taking. But we'll let you take some home. <laughs> That's why I do it. It's a lot easier once you've seen it being done. I think so. Yeah, then, then it kind of all makes sense and it doesn't look so intimidating. And it is really delicious too. Marla? Yeah? Um, Susan just texted that she needs the link to the feed and the password. You know, I put it in Arrive. Who is talking to me, Debbie? Uh, Roseanne. Oh, Roseanne. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I just sent it to her. Oh, okay. Is there a password in there? No, there's no password because there's a waiting room. Oh, fine. So, hold on. Hey, Roseanne. Yes. Because we're kind of busy on this end, do you think you could copy that link in the text with you and her? Can you copy the Zoom link in there for us, for her? For Susan? Um, yeah, let me try. Yeah. Here we go. Oh, wait a minute. Here she is. She's waiting to get in. Oh, good. Okay. All right. There you are, Susan. You're in. Okay, Susan, you're in. Do you want to unmute? Do you want to un unmute yourself? Oh, I was I muted? You were yes. muted. Okay, I'm Susan, and I have making a home with Susie, and I'm here to show you some decorating ideas for Thanksgiving. I just got off the beach, so my hair's wet. Sorry. <laughs> We're all envious. <laughs> you just so. got off the beach. That's great. Well, joining us so far is Mary and Tawny and Roseanne. There's Roseanne in person. There's Susan in person. Susan's putting on her earrings. Not only is she is her hair wet, but she's finishing getting dressed for us too. <laughs> so we're just waiting for a few more people to join. I don't even know what time it is. It's 105. Oh, it's 105. Okay. Well, we'll wait just a few more minutes and then we'll get started. How's that sound, everybody? So, does everybody have wine? We do. Do you guys have your wine? Do you have your hair clip? Are you guys all ready to roll? I know Susan is like, what is this all about? So part of our culture is when you're cooking, certainly when I'm cooking, and when I'm cooking for like a really big group, not necessarily every night when I do it for um, dinner every night, but when I am cooking for a large group, like I did for my daughter's birthday party, which was not a large group, but I was cooking for a couple days. And what I do when I make a lot of food for a big dinner party um, is I put my hair up. And my family has learned that when my hair is up, it means something really special is coming out of the kitchen. So the way that we've always started out is we put our hair up and we pour a glass of wine. So And, and enjoy I, the moment. And enjoy the moment. And um, Susan, I wanted to introduce you to Tanya Murray. This is Tanya. Hi, Tanya. This is Susan. Hi, Susan. Nice to meet you. Tanya has been joining me. <laughs> Tanya has been joining me in the kitchen since we started this. It just started with, can you show uh, holibrating? And we had so much fun in the kitchen together. And now she's joined me every time I'm here. So it's really fun. <laughs> okay, so great. I'm going to get the wine. You get two glasses. Can okay. I do that? I'm going to get my hair clip. And the camera is Vile. Uh, so just so you guys know, I had trouble deciding what wine to actually there's mary's wine mary can't find her unmute there we go perfect but this says on the label it says 
there we go. It says love is more than a feeling. And I thought, oh, since we're always spreading love like butter, there we go, let me turn that for you. Since we're always spreading love like butter, I thought that the fact that that label said love kind of like spoke to me, so that's why I chose this. So, should we put our hair up first? Yes. Okay, let me get my clap. It's showtime. It's showtime. When it's we start time putting, to cook. When we start putting our hair up, we get the hairspray handle over there. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> so we're putting our hair up. If everybody wants to put their hair up, is mine up correctly? Yeah. Look. Let's get a tight shot on that. <laughs> Can I see that? Oh, that looks terrible. Okay, hold on. One more time. There we go. That's good. And we're going to grab the rubber band. Can you pull that down just a little bit? Thank you. Thank you. I went backwards on that. Okay. There we go. Okay. And. How all good recipes start. How all good recipes start. And how all good cooking classes start. What is your biggest pain point? Well, here, let me ask that question. After we toast, I'll put this here. Okay. okay. Happy Thanksgiving to you and Happy to all of you. To all of you. Thank you for joining us so much. Cheers. I've got my drink, but it's not wine. <laughs> Oh my, oh, that's good. That is really good. Okay. It tastes like love. It tastes like love. So tell me just really quickly, and Mary, you have to put it in the chat, but let's go one by one. Roseanne, what is your pain point mostly when you are cooking for Thanksgiving? Do you have one? No. No? <laughs> okay. How about you, Connie? Do you have one? I always forget something. I leave it in the oven. It, it's just a tradition. So it's almost not a pain point anymore. <laughs> it's, just, it's just part of totally getting i can't get this hair out is that it yeah. okay all right i no, i no. yeah okay no, how about you susan thomas who me yeah. um i really don't have any it's just trying to get well getting it on the table hot that's one yeah. of the things right? yeah that's huge but if you get the gravy hot then i guess you just pour it over the rest of it <laughs> <laughs> what about you um I think it's just the timing of all of it and then working backwards and knowing when to start because like Susan, I like everything to be piping hot when it hits the table. So it's hard. It's well, you know what I learned? Let me share this with you. I learned this from an Ina Garden episode okay. is that I cook my turkey ahead because I, I like ahead by an hour before everybody actually gets here or an hour before we're going to eat it. And I carve it up because when you carve, it actually causes it to get cool and by the, if you carve and then put it on the table, it's cold. So I carve it and I put gravy at the bottom of this big platter. Let me show you oh. the platter that I use. I put gravy on the bottom of this. It's kind of, you see it's wow. got a rim on it, right? So I put a lot of gravy on the bottom. I carve it up, I put it on top of the gravy and I put it in the oven on a warming cycle, like 200, whatever your lowest cycle is. And then honestly, I get everything. Whoops, I'm gonna go back in. I get everything out of the oven on the table, you know, on the serving area. And then I come and I take the turkey out of the oven and put it out, and it is juicy and hot and perfect. So my goal is always to cook that turkey and have it done an hour before. Get it carved because Tom and I sometimes fight about the carving and I get nervous if everybody's waiting and everything. So that keeps me from being nervous and keeps him from getting stressed from me yelling at him because I don't like to yell at him except for at least once a day. Then but on, <laughs> if it's twice in a day, it just doesn't go well. And so <laughs> just too much. <laughs> oh, I already had you want to save me. it up though. If you know you can avoid it with the turkey program you have set up and yes. you can yes. save the token for later yes yes so that's how i do it i'm telling you it's been fla flawless all the mary time. Uh, yeah Marla? Uh, mary just typed in a question she said did you do you cover it when you put it in the oven yes i do i cover it let's say hi to susan harrison hey susan how hi, are susan. you oh she can't hear us yet if we say hi too soon you can't hear hi susan hi susan 
Oh, got to unmute yourself, Susan. There we go. Unmute. And that's that's Mary's husband, Jerry, standing next to her in the kitchen. Hi, Jerry. Hi, Jerry. Hi, Jerry. How fun is that? Oh, hey, they're so cute. How do you get yelled at, Jerry, on Thanksgiving? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> the yeller. <laughs> Oh, oh, there we go. All right, Susan. Say hello, yes. Susan Harrison. Say hello, Susan Harrison. Hi, guys. How are you? Okay. All right. Great. Okay. So we put our hair up. Your hair is already up. And Susan, we pour a glass of wine. We just toasted, and we're going to get started. I just gave my favorite tip for how I keep my turkey warm before everybody comes. So we are starting first actually with the Brussels sprouts because um, I wanted to just share with you. Now, you need to be on gallery view because Vile is here with her camera and Vile's camera is doing all the close-ups. So clean hands. Let me just wash them one more time to be sure. You can get a couple more to be sure that I haven't touched anything before I start tossing and doing it. Cool. There we go. So as I always start with the um, uh, Brussels sprouts, I just want you all to know that we are using both purple and green. And you can, I found these at Sprouts if you're from Las Vegas, if you're from Michigan or Florida, you might be able to find them from um, any other, uh, your specialty store. But these are the purples, these are the greens. Now I Spray these with food grade hydrogen peroxide, and then I soak them for a while, then I spun them, then I dried them. And so what we're going to do is we're going to trim them, and I just want to show you how to trim them. We're going to take the um, edge right there. We're going to trim that off, just like that. And when that happens, sometimes the outer leaves will fall off, and you want them to because those are those leaves that are very exposed and quite... Um, uh, you know, touched and whatever. So like with this, you see the outer leaves fell off. We're going to slice that in half. Like that. Same thing with the purple ones. I think those purple ones are so pretty too. Aren't they, Tanya? I'm so happy you told me where to find them. <laughs> those were Tanya's idea. Now, when I cover things in foil, like when you ask me about the turkey, do I cover it? I always put parchment paper between my foil and my food because aluminum is toxic and we don't need to add metal toxins to what we're eating. And so I always put a piece of parchment in between um, what I'm cooking and the covering because I like foil because it keeps everything in, you know, keeps air out. But as you can see right now in this, I have this covered with foil but I had parchment in between it and the foil. So I just, that's my pro tip for the day. <laughs> um, okay, so I'm just gonna throw that. This dinner night, LOL. So as you can see, we've got these in here. Now I've got another whole platter because it calls for a pound and a half because no matter how many people you have for Thanksgiving, you want a lot, you do. I did not put the other platter of the Brussels sprouts in here because it will steam if they're too close together rather than roast. So I'm gonna grab some spray olive oil because that's the easiest to do, All right? Spray that and I'm gonna grab some salt and pepper. Hey Marla, can I ask a question? Absolutely, this is interactive, ask away. Perfect, what is the difference in taste between the green and the purple Brussels sprouts? You know, I don't think there is any. Do you um, know I just had them this week and they don't really taste different. I just thought they were cute. Yeah. <laughs> But I just it's visually different, and so it's kind of a nice change of pace. But um, they tasted pretty much identical to the green ones, as far as I could tell. And I did a mix like Marla's doing now. Yeah, because they're so pretty, and it's really kind of like a red cabbage and green cabbage. I don't think they taste different. They just exactly. look different. Exactly. Yeah. So one of the things that I found when you're like salting and peppering something like this, you want to hold it above because for some reason it sprinkles better. So let me just now clean hands, chef's best tools. That's a mine and garden quote. I'm going to get her quote because I don't want to get sued. I stole her line there. Not that I have, you know, anyway. So I'm going to just do that. And I'm just going to hand this over to you for just a moment. And we're going to take the second platter and do the same. 
again, the reason that I separated these into two platters is because if they're too close together, they will steam rather than roast. They are so much better when they are roasted. Okay, so spray with the olive oil. There we go. Salt. Hold it above. So much more control for whatever reason when you hold it up. There we go. A little bit of pepper. So the great thing, I'm using a silicone uh, placemat or a silicone roasting mat. And I really like the way that things that my husband doesn't like it because he always cleans up after me. And he, <laughs> hates, he goes, I hate those things. I go, I know you do because you're the one that has to clean them. But I like them because they do a really good job. Okay, let me wash my hands, get all the oil off. And we'll pop these into the oven and then set the timer for... Yeah, I'll if you open. Want, if you open, yeah, I'll open. You shove. Bottom oven, because believe it or not, Nanny Bubby's top oven doesn't work. On the uh, one, yeah, I meant to put that rack down, but go ahead. You just put that right here. Yeah. Okay. There we go. All right. Done. Okay. Let me set the timer for 20, 25 minutes. We'll smell them if they start roasting a little too much. And we'll get back to them in just a minute. Okay, off to the relish. All right, so now we're gonna do the Grand Marnier Cranberry Relish. And this is a recipe that we got maybe 10 years ago from one of my mom's really good friends. Her name is Myrna. So um, in our house, we always Cheers end up Myrna. naming, Cheers to Myrna. <laughs> and you can always count on Myrna to incorporate some alcohol cheer. Into oh, good. <laughs> uh, so anyway, super easy recipe. You're going to start basically with all of your prepped fruit and everything. So, thank you. Got our cram fresh cranberries. And if you're not cooking along but planning to cook, I got these at Trader Joe's. But the grocery store has them too. Um, chopped apples, Granny Smith. I don't know what temperature you put that on. Um, just medium. Okay. Is 300 medium? No idea. I'm going to find out. <laughs> and the pears. Oh, pears. I love yes. that. Yes. Look at that. Look how beautiful these pots are, too. Aren't they? Can you get like a high shot? So I just want to remind these everybody. These pots are kind of my new obsession and treat to myself. I've, I've never had nice pots and pans. So. And who are these by, by the way? Um, Rufoni from oh. Williams Sonoma. Oh, beautiful. They are. But if you are obsessed with them like I am at first sight, they do have them at the Williams Sonoma outlet in Prim. So that was a huge find for me. Oh, great. Right. Yes. And They're some so golden beautiful. raisins. Our sugar. Oh, how much sugar is that? Two cups of sugar. Right. Now, let me write the recipe while you're doing that. I'll just call it out for you. Now, as you can tell, I've made this a few times. <laughs> And then we're gonna have two teaspoons of cinnamon. And the thing I like about this is you don't have to be super precise. So I'm kind of guessing. I love that about her. <laughs> I would be like, where's my teaspoon? I need to measure this out. She's like, oh, I think this will do. We have one cup of fresh orange juice. Ah, I love that. And then the other thing we're gonna do is some orange zest, which we're gonna zest and then get that in and then we're just gonna let it all kind of cook down. And when do you put the Grand Marnier in? At the end. Ah. That's my favorite part. This looks gorgeous. It oh, smells Debbie even better. Debbie is here. Let me put De get Debbie in. There we go. So. Debbie's gonna be popping in here soon. Uh, Debbie, are you there? Debbie didn't come. Uh-oh. So one of the things there that she I is. love okay. for Zesting something, you can use a microplane grater, which works great. This is a Pampered Chef zester, and I absolutely love it. It does a great job of just getting the zest, so you only get the good part. Oh, I can feel that. That just zested all over my hand. I'm sorry. No, no, I love that. It was, I can feel it coming. Oh, and it smells so good. It, you just get the zest. Oh, my gosh, you should do that over this pot. Well, I'm going to chop it up. Oh, but I mean the, the moisture coming out is oh. so beautiful. Let's see. Want to try, try it? it? Can you try it? 
I'm all, is I it, love to improvise. Is it too hard? Oh, do you see how all oh. that's coming out? Do it like, put that to the bottom, go from the bottom. There you go. Now you've got all that great zest um, moisture going into. Hey, Debbie, welcome. Oh. Doesn't that, can you feel it oh. and see it? Is that, that beautiful? I love the smell of any zested fruit, honestly. Oh, I know. <laughs> it's just incredible. It's like the best, freshest, brightest part. Totally. And you just want to have it on kind of like a medium oh, heat. See, you want to get it simmering, but you don't want it to burn because you're going to cook it down kind of slowly. You're wanting to, um, I get it. You want it to chop that. That's okay. okay. It'll just kind of cook around. It, it just, look at all that moisture that came out of that. See yum, what it's doing yum. to the sugar? Yum, yum. Okay. okay. So there we go. And nutmeg. You have nutmeg? I don't, and I will confess I forgot about it until I, I got here because I, I don't eat nothing. Oh, do you not want it in? We can put it in. No. But do you not want it? No. No, you don't no it's good to it. have. Okay, so here's a nutmeg. We'll make sure go. it's authentic. Okay. And how much nutmeg? Quarter of a teaspoon. <laughs> My official measurement. <laughs> I love that. And so now we're just gonna, I just kind of stir it around so nothing burns on the bottom. And what's gonna happen as it cooks down, it's gonna I, start releasing the juices. I just wanted to really just take a moment and introduce the team because we've got Tanya here. And I'm oh, gonna dear. turn around and show you Belay. Belay, Ray, part of my team. <laughs> and our newest member, Brenda, might pop on or maybe not, but just wanted to welcome the team and thank the team. And so all of this loveliness, and I actually really enjoy cooking this like on a Sunday afternoon or something before Thanksgiving, because it just, it smells happy and holiday-ish and it's not too difficult. It doesn't require a whole lot of concentration or anything. <laughs> you just sort of stir and enjoy it. Isn't that what it's supposed to be about? Yes. We were just talking about that because somebody... I think it was Tanya that said something about cooking and being fast. And I said, no, 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 no. <laughs> cooking is not supposed to be fast. And it was never meant to be easy. Cooking can be fun, but it is centering and you are meant to take your time and you are meant to kind of go and, and labor over it. Because as you smell, as you chop, as you prepare for a meal, you are smelling it. Your stomach is preparing through the smell that you are getting to receive what you are cooking. And as your children and your family come into the kitchen, they are smelling it. And therefore their stomachs are preparing to receive what it is you are cooking. And let me tell you, that doesn't happen when you call Uber Eats or when you go through the drive-thru. All There's of a sudden- There's no love in Uber Eats. And there is not. There's ease, but if there is ease, it may not be healthy for you. I'm just saying. So mm, that is oh, and the cinnamon smell. and the nutmeg is going good. So yes. are we going to let that- So we're just going to let this cook. To basically, simmer. just let it simmer at kind of like a medium. You don't want it to boil or anything. It's really, truly a low simmer until it, it'll probably be about 40 minutes or so. So we'll just sort of keep stirring and watching it while we do other things. Okay, so I have this really hard, fast rule that you need to read a recipe as you are doing it. Read it through before you start and then read as you go. And even if it's a recipe that you do all the time, you still want to read it. Even some of the recipes that are actually mine that I have published, especially in a setting like this, I get rather nervous about it and I might forget like the key ingredient. And like the nutmeg? Yeah, like the nutmeg. Or the carrot cake my friend made once without the carrots. Oh, <laughs> I love that. It happens. And so you really, really need to always, that's my pro tip, always <laughs> read the recipe. So I'm going to start the butternut squash soup. Raise your hand if you're going to uh, do the butternut squash soup with us. Yeah, Roseanne is okay. okay. All right. Okay. If you don't mind, read that to me. Okay. So we're going to start with a tablespoon of olive oil and a tablespoon of butter. Yes. And the reason that I do that, I just want to tell you, is combine uh, butter with olive oil is that the butter allows us to brown 
and add flavor. And of course, if you're spreading love like butter, you got to find a good excuse to use butter for everything. Always. Whoever told us butter wasn't good for you was lying, just like they were lying about you need to do easy food. I believe that <laughs> for sure. Everything's okay. better with butter. Everything's better with butter. Okay, so I'm going to turn this on. There you go. That's how you know it's on. And I'm going to take a tablespoon of butter, and that might be two tablespoons. She's measuring Tanya's style. Yeah. I love that. I've already had too much wine. I'm such a white lady. Okay. Put my hair up and give me a glass of wine and look out. Okay. And let me grab the items out of the refrigerator. We need the olive oil. Yep. Olive oil. Okay. Put this right here. Olive oil. And I'm measuring tiny style for a tablespoon of olive oil. There we go. So we'll let that heat up. And then we're adding the butternut squash into um, the. We're going to do. We're gonna add the chopped onion until oh, it softens. Right. Thank this you. is why you keep your recipe handy. That is correct. Because <laughs> I know Marla's made this a hundred times. I have made it a hundred times, and it's my favorite thing to make, especially this time of year. So one of the reasons that you don't put garlic in at the time that you're doing your onions is because garlic will burn very, very easily. So you want to always add garlic after the onions are cooked and right before you're gonna start adding something else because burnt garlic does not taste great. And so, it does not smell good either. No, it doesn't. It really doesn't. So I always thought that you put garlic in first and then the onions, but that was when I was a really bad cook. But as I have learned, so I chopped this onion before. So, because nobody wants to watch me chop onions. Nobody wants to watch anybody chop onions because you'll cry for a completely different reason. Well, have you seen you can order onion gobbles? On Amazon, they look like swim goggles, but they're for cutting onions. Well, you know what? One thing I learned is I said to somebody, <laughs> "This is a that would be a sight if your family walked in. They <laughs> saw you in your goggles, and they'd be afraid to eat." <laughs> <clears throat> one thing that I, that happened to me is I I turned to one of my family members and said, "You know, years ago, onions used to make me cry whenever I chopped them, uh -huh. but I can chop onions all the time. I just don't think onions." are what they used to be. I would agree. Right. Yes. However. It depends on the onions too though. Well, it could, but this is what happened. I wear contacts. Oh. Which are, a sh which are goggles for your eyes. And one day, Sunday, I usually wear my glasses, but one day without my, my contacts is great. And I chopped an onion and let me tell you, my nose was running, my eyes were running. <laughs> and I realized that my contacts were actually shields for my eyes. And I thought that was amazing. That is. Because I didn't know, because I'm only a recent contact wearer. So we're going to sweat these onions. Raise your hand if you know what sweating onions is. Raise your hands. Yep, there you go. Tawny, describe it for me, Tawny. What is sweating onions? Well, you just cook them long enough until they get start to get soft and liquidy and sweaty. Yeah, there you go. And usually they get about a little bit translucent. Would you agree with that? For sure, okay. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna sweat these onions, let them get kind of translucent. So who's got a great Thanksgiving story they wanna share? Anybody? Something funny? Mary would love to, but she can't type all that. Look at this shot that, uh, that Vile has on the onions. That's awesome. Good shot, Vile. Thanks. Vile. So hopefully you're in gallery view, and if you're in gallery view, you can see all of this. Because we've got Vile's camera on the tight shot, and we've got us on the not tight shot. The wide shot. On the wide shot. <laughs> and you can hear us, because we figured out our mic issue. We figured out how to do this correctly this time. Without AirPods. Without AirPods falling out of Tanya's ear. <laughs> Every time I smile, the AirPod loosens up, so I was worried last time it was going to fall into our pot. Yeah, for those of you who are just joining us for the first time, we have had... Really, on, this, on this, you can see how, like, the water is starting to evaporate a little bit. Oh, that's great. And so we're just going to let it keep simmering, simmer, simmer. So I just want to say one thing very quickly. In the event that we lose transmission for any any reason, 
stay and do not leave. We will log back in because what happened is just uh, last time we did this, we had 22 people online with us and we lost connection. And they were all like, oh my God, now what? Oh my God, now what? Oh, Susan is there. Hey, Susan. Are you guys, Susan and Susan are waving at each other. Susan, tell us, so if you lose us, tell us, uh, don't go away. We'll be right back as soon as we can log in. Okay, Susan Harrison, tell us who that is with you. This is Mike. Can you hear me? Hi, Welcome. Hi, Mike. Yeah, all about cooking, so I'm- Yeah, yes. yeah he, all right, yeah. I love that. I love a man who can cook. <laughs> yeah, you know what else he's all about is doing the dishes. Yes, yes. Mike. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, we have teenagers with that. That is awesome. Mike, it's so nice to meet you. I love your Susan so much. I love both my Susans, but I love yours. I just want to, your Susan is what I'm referring to right now, but I love them both. Nice. Thank you, Thomas. You okay. some, is this a professional cooking show? It looks amazing. Well, thank, well, thank you, you very much. Yeah, I mean, I, mean, I, I look on TV. <laughs> and yeah, the, yeah. Here's, cheers to Mike, for sure. Okay. It looks just like the All ones right. on TV. I'm not well, commenting that cooks will well, get well, you. <laughs> okay, what's next? Okay. Add the garlic or not yet? Um, I don't add the know. squash. There we go. Three bags. My now these bags. Until it starts to brown. Yes. So that's why we put the butter in. And then the garlic. Yes. Because the butter helps the butternut squash brown. Now I just want to show you these bags. These are from Trader Joe's. Ooh. Love Trader Joe's. Yes. There you go. And interestingly enough, this year, usually these are big chunks, but they must have gotten either complaints or, some, or suggestions. And they're really small chunks this year. And I was really happy to see that because the bigger chunks are much harder to do. Okay, so three bags in. And so now this is gonna take a little bit of time to brown. So we can chat it up. Connie, how many people are coming for Thanksgiving with you? This year? Um, it's just us, just my daughter and my son and my husband and me. Oh, yeah. You, you know, know, we're being we're being COVID safe. Yeah. You know, every year I have a really big Thanksgiving, like 20 people or more. Or less, you know, but I I Thanksgiving is my favorite holiday. I love Thanksgiving. It is just so meaningful to me. And I, what I love about it is, is that the holiday doesn't ask for anything, right? Yes. You don't have to worry about bringing a gift. You don't have to worry about anything. You're just coming and being with those you love. And when I was a little girl, my family used to always come from California to be with us. And I knew, because we were in Las Vegas and we had no family here. So when everybody used to come to be with us, it was always my favorite holiday. And, um, so this year, my daughter, uh, it's their turn to go to California. And we have no guests coming, so it's just five of us. It's my mother, my mother-in-law, my husband, and my son. And it's okay, but it's, I feel sad about it, really, I do. So I, all this, and I love everybody. It's hard when you're used to having a big gathering. It is. And not feeling like you're getting to have your tradition. I know. I know, I know. So you know what I realized? And also adjusting to not cooking for 20 people. I know, which <laughs> all my recipes are for 20, so I don't know what we're gonna do. So I realized that I forgot just a little bit to talk Use your about- food saver to store all the leftovers. Yes. <laughs> you know, Thanksgiving in July. Yeah. <laughs> but let's talk about the pumpkins, right? Yes. Yeah, let me grab those. Pumpkins. Say a few words to everybody. Look them in the eye and tell them I'll be right back. Well, oh, I'm, I'm here. Okay. <laughs> okay. So I'm actually just gonna cover this with the, the pumpkins and uh, it'll steam a little bit and then start to brown. It'll, it'll help it soften. That's a great idea, Marla. <laughs> so <laughs> glad I thought of it. Okay, so. What's that? Uh, okay, just three of us this year. Oh, Mary, happy Thanksgiving. Listen, three is better than none. And three is better than being in the hospital all by yourself, which my heart bleeds for all of those that are there, so. We're gonna take all of our wounds. Oh, Jerry, look at that, Jerry. Aww. Oh, you Jerry, so you're so cute. How many years have you been married? Tell me, how many years? Uh, 30. 30, 40, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30
37? Oh. Oh my God, I beat you. So I'm married sweet. 40. I'm married 40. I know I don't look old enough to be married 40 years. Oh, look at him. <laughs> How You're cute. So I love that. Oh, is he precious or yes. not? Oh my God. She's like, get out of my show. <laughs> You're making me even happier than this beautiful food we're cooking. Do you guys need a room or you're okay there? <laughs> <laughs> they hear, did they hear me? Okay, so. Upper Peninsula of Michigan in cold country. Oh, so they don't need a room because they're in Michigan? People in Michigan don't need a room? <laughs> uh, let me rethink that. <laughs> okay. So these are the tiger pumpkins that I've thought about. I just want to tell you, just really uh, not thought about, but talked about. Um, I just want to tell you that doesn't fit with the bedroom. I need to turn it one more time. Okay, there we go. So I will tell you that use a paring knife. Using a paring knife to cut these, that way you will not cut all the way to the bottom. And cutting the top square or rectangle actually helps you because if you cut it round, it's very hard to do. I used a grapefruit spoon to, oh, grapefruit spoon has those serrated edges, so it scrapes it. And what I want to tell you is to be very careful. Oh, Brussels sprouts are done. Can you grab those? Um, the oven mitts, Tony, it'll stop. The oven mitts are right over here. Watch my finger, right there. Okay, thank you. All right, what you want to do is as you scrape, to be very careful that you do not scrape this bottom. And let me show you why. This is the stem. And you do not want to do anything to weaken this stem because what will happen is when you put the soup in here, it will start to come out. So I leave, if you can zoom into that, you see that little, yeah, see that right there? That will be fine. It's at the bottom of your soup and it will be just perfectly fine. So leave a little something centered out of that stem. Now I do want to show you that I chose this pumpkin because this pumpkin had a great stem and I thought it would be so cute to use as a bowl. But after I did that, I noticed that there was a flaw in this pumpkin that it has a little dent in it and the soup would completely come out of that. Can you see that? That right there. That is a weakness in the pumpkin that was there before I got hold of it. So I cut another one. This is nice and firm all around the bottom. There you go. And I left that stem really thick. So here's what we're gonna do to prepare these. And they're really, are those, oh, those are roasted and beautiful. We're gonna take these and we are, here's what you wanna do. When you smell that, it tastes like raw pumpkin. It's just not good. Raw pumpkin, yeah, right? But you spray a little bit of coconut oil in there and that smells good. You're going to turn it upside down and roast them upside down. And the reason upside down is so that stem again, that the juices from the pumpkin flow downward rather than down to the bottom, which will weaken that stem. I'm going to spray that. Spray the tops. And we're sticking these in a 375 degree oven, which the recipe calls for a 300 degree oven, but this, this oven is at 375 because it needed to be. So- Because that's what the, works for us. Yeah, for the Brussels sprouts. Okay, so follow us along. We're gonna set these in right at the bottom here. I'm actually gonna turn off the oven. Yes, oh, you already did, great. Did I you? did not. Oh, okay. Maybe I did without realizing it. And we're gonna set this, oh, that smells, the butternut squash smells so good. We're gonna, so good. Yeah, we're gonna just set this for seven minutes. Ah, I'm gonna set it for nine minutes. Let, and again, all we wanna do is we wanna cook it until the smell, that raw pumpkin smell gets out. So, okay, that steamed the butternut squash and it's starting to brown. There we go. Let's see. Okay, so how is everybody's doing? Good. Good. Um, um, Marla, are you just cooking for you and your husband? Is that what you said? No, I've got my husband, my son, and my mother and my mother-in-law. My mother-in-law is 90, going to be 90 next month in January, close to next month. And my mother is 88, going to be 88. And 
there is no way, listen, we are not going to give up, which any day could always be our last Thanksgiving with them, right? You never know. So we are not giving that up. We are going to be together. We were together last night and we're going to continue to be together um, until we can't be together. So we're all healthy. We're all fine. And that's what we're going to do. So I really feel that people more at risk from not feeling love and being with each other and being embraced by those who love them put them more at risk than the virus so yeah I, I can see, I understand that I mean I, personal I, choice I, everybody's personal choice. I think it's really affecting everybody's mental health anyways as I can speak for that I agree I really it's agree. getting to the point where it's gotten it's just you know I think the mental anxiety is worse than the fear of getting it now yeah and just being family yeah we were all talking about that um, earlier before you guys joined us is that we just were very worried about you know just this time, like lockdown 2.0 feels worse than lockdown 1.0, I think. It's just such a fatigue after eight months of this. Yeah. yeah. I think everyone's exhausted. So one thing I didn't do is put a little bit of salt and pepper in this, so I'm going to do that. That's looking good, Tanya. Thank you. So it's good. sort of like a, a similar... Similar to the risotto, you can't be in a hurry and just enjoy watching it kind of simmer down and transform into the most delicious cranberry sauce relish you have ever tasted. It smells amazing, can I just tell you? So do your Brussels sprouts. And oh, have oh, yeah. Done, done anything with them yet. I know. Wait till you see this Brussels sprout recipe. You're going to die at how easy it is, really. Well, I don't really want you to die. But I do know this. This butternut squash soup takes an immersion blender. And so I am going to go grab that immersion blender. Yeah, you stir. Yeah, you stir. Yep. This is smelling yummy. The whole kitchen smells so good. I know. It smells like Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. It's better than Now, are you going to post all these recipes on your Nanny Bubby page, I guess? Yes. Okay. Yes, we will. All these recipes, we should yeah. actually post on Instagram and then to Nanny Bubby. God bless you. Okay. Just continuing to. Okay, so looking at the recipe, what is the next step? So once step? it's soft, we're going to add the garlic and cook for a minute. Okay. And then the stock. So let me tell you, let's talk about the stock while this continues to soften a little bit. So Trader Joe's used to provide, you have a tight shot of that? Yeah. Trader Joe's used to have this and it was called vegetable stock or it looked just like this, but the label was green. And instead of being chicken, it was actually vegetable stock. One year I made two butternut squash recipes. I made one with my own homemade chicken stock and another with their Trader Joe's organic vegetable stock uh, because my daughter's vegetarian and I couldn't cross contaminate. And I thought, you know, I'm going to do a test, which is better, Nanny yeah. Bubby's homemade chicken stock butternut squash or Trader Joe's vegetable stock. And let me tell you, the vegetable stock won every single time. It was unbelievable. It was like gold. And don't you know, Trader Joe's discontinued the vegetable stock. Sprouts has a really good organic vegetable stock. Do now. they? Mm -hmm. sure. I just I'll used it, it last week. And it's stock, it, not? It's stock, not broth. And that's what I was going to say. Right. Um, mm -hmm. For those of you that don't cook with it a lot, I think there is a huge, huge difference between stock and broth. Exactly. Exactly. So what I did is I have never tried the chicken stock. And so even though my recipe does call for vegetable stock, I really wanted to try it with the chicken stock. And since my daughter won't be here for Thanksgiving, I thought it would be okay to do this. So we're going to do that in just a minute. Let's see how this is coming along. Is it getting soft and squishy? Yes. Not quite. Not quite. So 
I'm just wondering if we could heat this up and I'll go on to make the Brussels sprouts. Can I use yeah. that side for just a minute? Yeah. Okay. We'll let this simmer it away and I'll let you stir it. Actually, we'll let this stay here and I'll just move over to there or move this over to there. I'll just move. Okay. All right. Move this on. <laughs> okay. It's like While putting your stirring. turkey in the oven and forgetting to turn it on. Yeah. While we're stirring that recipe to me for the Brussels sprouts. Yeah. Well, how cute is your immersion washer? Yes. Pink, of course. Okay. So here we go. So the first thing we're going to do is add butter. And how much butter does it call for? Uh, a quarter cup butter and three tablespoons of olive oil. For the Brussels sprouts? Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. So. Can you call that for me? Thank you. <laughs> I color my van white. All right. I'm just doing the soft butter. Was the Christmas tree shop in Allentown closed today? Oh, Debbie, we can hear you. You're unmuted. <laughs> hey, Debbie, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, just wanted you to know you were unmuted. I didn't know that. Thank you. I'm driving in the car. <laughs> oh, you are? So happy you're joining us. Can you see us? Um, I feel like I can smell the food in the car. Is that possible? Yes. I think maybe it is. It smells so heavenly. Okay. So the next thing on the Brussels sprouts Three is? Three tablespoons of olive oil. Yep, got that. Okay. And, um, Two tablespoons mustard seed. Well, did you bring it over? I did. Oh, thank so you. So I could be a more effective assistant. <laughs> Much better. Okay. Get those pumpkins. I gotta get those pumpkins out of the oven. One minute. Let me get the pumpkins out. Question. Have you ever done those Brussels sprouts on a stalk? Have you seen those? Would they come on the stalk and they're not cut off? Um, I have seen those. I haven't cooked them on the stalk before, but I think that would be neat to do. Well, we have, I have a recipe. You roast them on the stalk and then you use it as an appetizer and you put a knife there and you cut them off and then you dip it in like this, um, Sriracha mayonnaise kind of a sauce. Oh my oh, god, I would that love that amazing. recipe. That sounds it's so real really, if you can only get it around the holidays. Like yeah, well, I've seen oh, that. Whole Foods around always the has it like starting this coming week. So just to show you on these pumpkins, when you turn them over, they've only been in there seven minutes. And you pumpkin smell them, they smell more like pumpkin rather than raw pumpkin, right? So we know these are ready, we'll let them cool. I will put the, yeah. Okay, so back to this. We'll put them down. Okay. Oh, I need another spatula. Okay, so two yeah. tablespoons mustard seed. Uh, where, did where did we put it down? Right here. Okay. I want to wing it. Yeah. <laughs> so here, here we go. Look at that. I'm putting in this yellow mustard seed. Get that in the spice arena. And you're going to let that kind of cook down and pop a little bit. Here we go. And it says to add a quarter cup of the coarse grain French mustard. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. Excuse me. Now I'm also going to squeeze a little bit of actually Dijon, regular Dijon mustard in here. Oh, there we go. Like 
about a tablespoon and a half. And then I'm going to take this coarse. Now, what's really great about the coarse grain, there we go, is that it mixes really well with the already mustard soap. So good. Okay. And then I'm going to turn that down because I don't know how to do this. But yeah. So there we go. And now we're simply take the Brussels sprouts. And roasted. Let's see, where'd they go? Right there. Where's the other one? I combined them. Oh, you did? Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, I'm just thinking, God, too far. Oh, gosh, look how beautiful that, that is. Right? They roasted so perfectly. They did. Now, we are going to toss these in the end. Now we're just going to toss these around just to make sure that everything is covered with that mustard. I know, doesn't that look beautiful? Ah, oh, they look so, I think that might be a good one. I know, I agree. it's absolutely beautiful. Now, you can make this recipe anytime you want, but let me just tell you about this. For Thanksgiving, I always grab these dried cranberries and I pour in enough Cranberries. I know that it, it said a certain amount. Now, what was the recipe say about how many cranberries? Three quarters of a cup. Okay. Oh. I put in enough so that in every toss you can see them. Look how decorative and festive that looks. Isn't that beautiful? Oh, so pretty. Turn this off. Now, here's the key with this you can remake this a day ahead or two days ahead. Put the top on. Put it in the refrigerator and Thanksgiving, you know, when you're reheating everything or getting everything into the oven, just put this right in the oven as is. And it's, there you go. Perfect. Russell sprouts. All kinds of good things today. So, shall we go to um, Susan Thomas? Let's tell you. Go ahead and let's talk about how my butternut squash is cooking down. Uh oh. Oh, did you lose? No. Okay, well, hold on a minute. Okay, sorry, we lost our video for a few seconds, but we're back. Did you guys see us drop out? I guess I got to show her all my stuff, so. I'm going to be coming out here. I'm going to show her all this stuff. Just went out of order. You just sit there. Do you want to turn this on? Yeah, definitely turn it on. Yeah, mute the TV. Mute the TV. It just takes a minute. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and you need your garlic. I need my garlic. Okay. But I've got to get this in there because it started to burn on the bottom. There we go. Okay, tell me when you're ready, Marla. I'm ready. Go ahead, Debbie. Okay, I gotta turn Start. my screen around. Okay. First of all, um, I'm gonna show you the table and the little the things that I have on them. And I don't know if y'all have ever seen these before, but um I wanted to have some wooden beads that kind of went through this. They have some wooden beads at Pottery Barn, but they haven't caught, come, they haven't arrived yet, which they're on back order, of course. I'm sure everybody wants them. But anyways, they're white wooden beads, and they're really cool, and they're like nine feet long, and I wanted to wrap those through all of this. But like I said, they're not here. So here's the table. Let me turn this around. And here's my table, and these are my... Um, well, I'll just show you like this. Those are my needlepoint pilgrims that I did. Aww. And when you have them sent Beautiful. off, th yeah, then they, they can, you know, make them stand up like that. And I made these well, probably about three or four years ago. And then the other things are these velvet pumpkins. Has anyone ever seen yeah. these? Um, who makes them? Hot squash or hot wash? And they're velvet, but she has real stems on them. Oh, really? Oh, the real stems? Yeah, she takes real, um, you know, pumpkin stems and, and glues them on there. And they're very fragile, so you have to be very careful. And she makes them in all different sizes. Now, this stem isn't as exciting. But anyways, um, you can buy them in groups or you can buy them separately. And she has, like, anywhere from 2 inches to 12-inch diameter pumpkins. And um, I have them in oh, lots of different colors, like for Christmas and Thanksgiving and Easter. Well, I don't think I have much for Easter. But um, 
just, you know, I don't think, no, I don't have any pastels. But anyways, I, I mix and match these all through the year. And then I have some ceramic pumpkins and um, this orange one. And then this teal colored, which kind of goes with my place, if you can see it. I mean, it's kind of hard to see because now the sun's going down. It's getting weird. But um, then I have this that I got at Home Goods, And it's like little, oh, I don't, it's like wood shavings that they've curled. And then... Um, you know, put, put on a pumpkin, just kind of glued on there. So that's kind of cool. And um, of course I have my orchid, which I always like to have my orchid in here. My husband's watching football. Anyways, um, I always like to have my orchids in here in my, my face planners, which I love. And you can move that around too. And sometimes I'll put in, at Easter time, I'll put smocked eggs around that. Well, and that what? What do you call smocked, do you have you ever, you know, smocking? Mm -hmm. you know, I like, have a friend like on little girls dresses oh. that, like they used to do like smocking yeah, on dresses smock. and like a little I know this smock. doesn't describe it but yeah they take know. fabric and they fold it and then they they thread it you know or they put designs on it smocking so I have smocked eggs for Christmas and Easter and well Thanksgiving it's kind of, I kind of have them for all my holidays but anyways <laughs> kind of got carried away with the smocking but anyways that's just how I am so we have the smocked eggs that I put around this little guy. And then um, I have some smocked ones. I don't think I have any for Thanksgiving this year. But anyways, that's another fun thing to add to it that's really cool. So and then it's, um, it's just because I like, pardon me? Let me ask you a question. Where, sure. like if you had to tell somebody at a place to go to get like um, decorative items for Thanksgiving, where do you think people should go? Well, I think Home Goods is the best okay. place. Is that? Yeah, I mean, if you can get there early enough. I mean, I got down here. Um, what time? When did I come? Like the like oh, right before Election Day, the second of November, and the Home Goods here in um, Stewart, Florida, was wiped out. There was one table left. Oh my god! It was gone. It was all Christmas. So you have to get there early because they really do have good stuff, and it's not expensive at all. It's like twelve ninety nine, nine ninety nine. I mean, you know, it's not bad. But I think Home Goods is the best as far as you know, if you want to keep yourself thrifty and you don't want to spend a lot of money and you know, you just want to make it decorative. And then, of course, you know, my needlepoint is everywhere, so you know, that's kind of one of the things that that's kind of my signature. But the needle, the velvet pumpkins are really a nice touch if it, if you want to look into that. And it's hot, hot, hot squash. And then you can just, you know, Google velvet pumpkins and they have them everywhere. But the ones that are the nicest that I've found are the ones with the real stems on them, which in this one's really cool. I like that. Home goods, Susan? I'm sorry. Do you get those at home goods, the ones with the real stems? No, no. You got to order those online. It's hot squash. Hot and the woman hand makes them. Her name's Dara, D-A-R-A. Cool. And she's very talented and she can decorate. I just usually tend to go with the plain ones. But they have some that are very decorative. They have different color fabrics. They have like ribbons and feathers and beads. And, you know, they can get real fancy. But I like to keep them simple. So anyways, um, then, then really the only other thing I have here, I can show you on my buffet. I just have candles with, um, I have sea glass in here that lights up. It, and I, I can turn it on. I can show you over here. And then I just have a you know, bunch of stuff in this bowl right here. I just kind of threw some stuff together some different colors. And then, um, and then over here, which orange is kind of my colors. So that's, you know, I know it's kind of a thank you giving cover color too, but um, it's kind of my, my color here. So it's a, you know, it's kind of a Thanksgiving color too, but I have these um, sea glass. I got these at pier one and now the pier one's gotten out, gone out of business. I'm not sure where you can get them, but um, they're just kind of pretty. And I wrapped them around the bottom of the lamp. And then I put candles in these two little um, votives and, you know, and that's just kind of a nice touch, but that's more year round. That's not totally. I love the sea glass. I do, I do too. And, you know, that's why I was kind of upset because I went well, on upset. I mean, it's no big deal, but you know, I, I ordered these really cool wooden beads that I wanted to, to weave all through there and then weave on the table. And like I said, I think everybody had the same idea because they're on back order. <laughs> so at a shop well, early well, girls hopefully they'll surprise you and show up in time and well, I, I want hope so to say, 
I wanted to also say that Susan actually lives in West Virginia, but she goes down to Florida for the holidays during the really cold months. So it was hard for her to get everything together. Yeah. All my stuff is basically at home. So I just have, you know, kind of had my husband bring down my pilgrims when Thank he came. So thanks for joining us today. And thanks for this. Susan and I did a great interview on Thursday. And I have to say, I was like anxious to know what my daughter was going to say about that interview. And she was like, oh, yeah, needlepoint has been a, is a real big thing now. It's like really making I was like, oh, I'm cool now, point. right? I yeah, thought she was going to make and fun of me. Cross -stitch and yeah. it is. Crochet. It is. You can have like one of those kits now um, for crocheting. I forgot. We will maybe is what it was. I just saw it today. And so uh, we were doing this interview with Susan and Susan just cracked up because Susan said, you know, just go to your local needlepoint store and get a starter kit. Yeah. And I said, what do you think? We drive by needlepoint stores in Las Vegas? We drive by strip clubs. Yeah. This is Vegas. We don't drive by needlepoint stores. <laughs> you have to really hunt for that. You really have to hunt for that. Strip clubs, no problem. There's one on every corner. <laughs> Well, luckily you can buy them online because, you know, uh, lots of times we, I yeah. do have one in Charleston and she's, but she's old. If you really want the, you know, up, getting online is really good too. Awesome. Thanks, Susan. Roseanne, shall we You're start welcome. with Roseanne or do you want to start we the lasagna first? start this because okay. it has to cook for a little bit and everything. Okay. Okay. That gives me time to melt the chocolate. Okay, good. Oh, Go melt perfect. your chocolate and let's start. Okay. So we are going to start this um, butternut squash and hazelnut lasagna. If I can get the pan turned on. Is it on? I thought I just turned it on. Well, you have to hit uh, menu. Oh. And then, and if you can, you can exactly you know. begin to melt. So which one? You want to temperature? We'll go with temperature. Okay, so okay. we're going to start with three tablespoons of butter, which I very precisely measured out. And we're going to get that melted. And then we're going to start by cooking the onions. And kind of similar to what Marla did with the soup, you just want to cook them until they're soft and translucent. When you caramelize the onions, it ends up giving it a different flavor, which is not what we want for this particular dish, although I'm always a huge fan of caramelized mm -hmm. onions. No. So, get this melting. I was my own sous chef last night. Delinia, there, Tony Murray. Yay. I'm going to put in the chat the name of the pumpkins that you can, the velvet pumpkins that you can go online and look at if you're interested. Okay, cool. Thank you so much, Susan. Thanks for being with us today. You're such a doll. Sure. It's been I fun. That velvet pumpkin is so pretty. Isn't it? I love that too. Yeah. Thank you. There, there might be some online shopping later today. Ah. So we're just going to cook this down a little bit. I don't know if Marla has more steps on the soup. No, I'm just waiting for oh, it to okay. come to a boil. Okay. That cranberry and, relish is looking amazing. And this is the point, kind of like risotto. You want to keep going and let it keep just kind of cooking down. And one of the things I learned from Marla's jam that we did the first time is that the green apples in this act as pectin. So it does, it's going to get that jam consistency when you cook it down. Right, I don't know if you all know that, but I'm gonna just repeat it, is Granny Smith apples have a ton of pectin in them. And so if you're making any kind of jam, if you add, you know, a chopped up Granny Smith, you may not have to add pectin to your recipe. So um, I put the Granny Smith apple into my blackberry basil jam and using it for cranberry yeah. sauce is great. I had never known that was why it thickened up. I thought it was just cooking it down. Oh, we just thought you were so cool. Yeah. So cool. So we'll cook down our onions a little bit. Am I tossing these bags? I think so. Okay. Just kind of doing a little bit of cleanup while we wait. 
I probably should have started the onions earlier. Oh my gosh. So here's the question. Do you think these Brussels sprouts will keep till Thanksgiving? No, probably have to redo them, huh? But oh my gosh. So you're going to have to eat them for dinner tonight. Yes, yes. <laughs> oh no. Leftovers from last night, but look at that. Isn't that just gorgeous? So beautiful, right? With the purple and the green. I've got to go back and get some more. They're just beautiful. So happy. You want to taste them? Oh, do you want to taste them? You taste them. Yeah. I do. Well, we got do you want to taste them? I think we should give our IT department a taste. Yes. <laughs> we'll work for food. Basically. Okay. Yeah. Let me do this. Let me give a spoonful of cranberries to our beautiful Mille. Thank you. And Mm. Oh, it's so good. It looks so good. It is so good. Is it? Mm. They're berries, right? Marla, there's a question in the chat. Mm. Oh, the purple ones I got at Sprout. Those are so good. Sprout. Mm. Okay. Definitely making those tonight. Drop that. I think they might could use a little bit more salt and pepper. Actually. But the cranberry on it makes it complete. Yeah, between the cranberry and the mustard, mm -hmm. it really gives it all kinds of texture. layers of flavors, mm -hmm. right? Okay, remind me where the recipe is. Okay, so after we, we're going to add the um, thyme and the sage. Here, here, here we go. Okay, so putting in sage and thyme into this right now. I'm going to give it a stir. I think it's just about done. So I'm going to grab the immersion blender while that is going. So Roseanne, you holler when you're ready, when your chocolate is melted. I love these strawberries that Roseanne does. And she's going to... Are you ready? No, about one more minute. Okay, <laughs> no problem. I'm gonna turn this off. I need to plug. When you are done with that, I'm gonna move this over so I can make the sauce. Okay. Let me, I have to go around you. Oh, sorry. Let's see, I don't wanna unplug yours. It's mine, okay. Okay, I'm gonna come you. I'm not trying to be fresh. I'm just trying to get around here. Give her a couple glasses of wine. <laughs> okay. So in with the immersion blender. Bring this up. Now this is going to be browner than normal because the they caramelize at the bottom of the pan. See that the immersion blender is really pulling in. Let's see, are we on high? We are on low. Let's turn it up. I, there we go. I see it tilting a little bit so that it pulls everything in. Are you getting that? Look at that. Is that gorgeous? Look at it swirl. Can you guys see that? Isn't that amazing? Yeah. It's so much easier than putting it in. Oh yeah, tossing it into the Vitamix and then going through all this. So this caramelized, got very caramelized on the bottom of the pan. If you can unplug that and then plug the other one in. Oh, there we go. So this is actually a little bit browner than normal. Um, let's see, where did my little spoon go? My little, here it is. But you can see it's a richer color, much richer color there. Okay. 
All right, there we go. And now I think what we're doing is we're going to add the cream to this. Um, yep, half cup heavy whipping cream. And we're going to bring it to a boil and then set it to rest. There you go. Oh, look how beautiful that is. Is that gorgeous? Oh, it's beautiful. Now this is a little bit rothy and a little liquidy for me. I usually like it a little bit thicker. So the good news is, is I'm going to pick up some extra butternut squash at the grocery as we get closer to the holiday, you know, tomorrow. And I'm going to add more butternut squash, you know, I'll soften it mm -hmm. and add some more butternut squash to it. It'll be thick and ready to go into the bowls. Look how beautiful. Yay! Smells Let's have fabulous. a half of butternut squash. Yay! Okay, so I'm going to move this off. Yep. Okay, I will turn it off. You want to just move this right over? Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. And then it needs to be, let's see, on like low, low center. There we go. Okay, so. Our onions are kind of coming along and we're going to add our chopped butternut squash, garlic, salt, and pepper. So this was the cubed squash I got from Costco and I just put it through the food processor to chop it up. I like it when I make this recipe, I like it chopped a little bit finer than they say in the recipe just um, so that the layers lay evenly. Beautiful. I really want to say this is absolutely, it's thick. Do you just want to show this really quick? Mm -hmm. It's thick. Oh my God. It is absolutely gorgeous. And the smell, the cinnamon and the cranberries, the pear. Yum. Oh my gosh. So beautiful. It is dying for Grand Marnier. Yes, it is. <laughs> Okay. Our squash is dying for a teaspoon of minced garlic. All right. That's my version of measuring. <laughs> and then we need a little bit of salt and pepper. And we're going to reach around. Yep. I'll switch with you when you're ready. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, we'll just, we're going to stir that around and that's just going to sit and cook for a little while until it softens. And in the meantime, we will finish our cranberry relish with the best part and then get started making our sauce for our lasagna. So this butternut squash lasagna is great for those who show up your Thanksgiving table who are vegetarian. Mm -hmm. it, it's a wonderful vegetarian dish because it really is very substantial and filling. It doesn't look like an afterthought for the vegetarian. You know, it's something that you definitely take some time and effort to put together. And it has such wonderful flavors. I find that it goes really well as a side dish with um, steak or poultry or even fish. It's just a beautiful, unexpected combination. And can you batch cook this? Absolutely. And I discovered that the first time I made this, um, it made a really giant, a big pan. And I may have doubled the recipe because I do that sometimes if I'm going to go with a lot of effort. It's so rich though, you don't eat very much. So you might have a slice like this, you know, about that tall. And so I had all this leftover and certainly after all the time I spent making it, I didn't want to have it go bad. So I actually cut it up into pieces that would be big enough for two to three people as leftovers. Food savored it and it was wonderful. I had enough for probably six months. Yeah, that's, <laughs> awesome. that's awesome. 
I'm ready whenever you are. Okay. Okay. Do you want to let um, Roseanne go? Yeah. Yeah, well, that's yeah. kind of cooking down. Okay, Roseanne. The Yay. Okay. The first thing I want to tell you is that the, the chocolate that you buy really makes a difference in terms of taste. I've tried several different brands of chocolate melt wafers. Hello. Um, and then I, what I learned was that the, the flavor is not as good as a regular chocolate because most chocolate melt wafers don't have a lot of chocolate in them, surprisingly. So I did a lot of research and what I found was the three top flavored um, chocolate is the Guitar brand, that rates number one. And I just put that, put that closer to your camera so we can see. Can you see it? Hard. Yeah, okay. Where did you find that, Roseanne? Um, uh, Cost Plus carries it, but believe it or not, so does Target. Oh, oh. good Sorry. tip. Good pro tip. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. And bittersweet, it comes in, it comes in extra dark. It doesn't matter whatever your flavor preference is that's what you get and these are um baking chips so you don't even have to chop them up and so where are you, what are you using today the bittersweet or the dark i'm using the semi-sweet there's semi -sweet. Not a difference between bittersweet and semi-sweet there's what there's not much difference in flavor profile between bitter sweet and semi-sweet uh-huh uh, the second brand is Ghirardelli's Baking right. Bar Chocolate, and you just break those up into little chips. Uh -huh. and they, they come in the, all the flavors as well. The third uh, flavor, which is still very good, I, I like guitar, guitars the best, but the third is also Trader Joe's Chocolate ch uh, Chocolate. Yeah. Chocolate. yeah. Those are very good too, but after trying guitar, I just did it last night for the first time. Oh my gosh, it's so good. <laughs> All right, love that. Listen, you, you need can, you can um, put it on your Instacart at Target, right? Yes. yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> the first thing you need to know is when you melt your chocolate, you need to temper the chocolate. You, I do it in the microwave. You take three quarters of the amount of chocolate you're going to use. I use a whole bag, so I use three quarters of a bag. Put it in your microwave for uh, about 20 seconds at 50% power. Stir it and just keep going in 20 second increments. So it uh, takes about a minute, stirring it each time. Um, and then put the rest of your chocolates in and stir it and look, do that for five second inch, uh, it, um, increments. It only takes a couple times to do that with the rest of your chocolate because the chocolate's already hot and it's gonna melt it. It melts itself, right? Yeah, you don't wanna over melt your chocolate because it'll scorch and you can't save it when it scorches. So I do that both with the, the dark chocolate and the light chocolate. You can also add about, <coughs> half a teaspoon of coconut oil, and that makes it nice and glossy and just brings it to a nice consistency. So then I come over here, let me see. Can you see that? Can you see my strawberries? Yeah, tilt, there you go, perfect, yeah. Okay, so what I do is I have my little spoon handy, but I'll take my little bowl just pick it up by the top of the stem. Oh, you got to clean your strawberries first. Make sure they're dry because if they're not dry, the chocolate's not going to stick. That's a good pro tip, right? That's a good pro tip. And make sure they're at room temperature, not fresh out of the refrigerator. Okay, another good oh, pro tip. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. I would have thought being out of the refrigerator would help it. So you're, chocolate so you're actually dipping them first, right? Dipping them first in the dark chocolate, okay. or 
putting them on parchment. Want to do reverse? You can dip them first in the white chocolate. All right. And embellish them with the dark. Now there's a few things I do. You you don't do the embellishment until the chocolate is firm and set. So that chocolate takes about 15 minutes in a fridge. Oh, but we have the magic of television. I love that. See, old broadcasters never die. That's right. Another thing I do is you can, this is shredded, chopped coconut. Oh, well, it's, oh my God, yeah. I'm dying here. Dark chocolate, shredded coconut. I love chocolate. <laughs> Somebody saw I've got more for you, Marla. Oh, my God. Okay, dark chocolate, chopped nuts. Oh yeah. This what is kind so of nuts are you using? Just chopped nuts. What kind of nuts, Rosanny? What? What kind of nuts? Those are just um, walnuts. All right. I um, buy them chopped, or you can chop them yourself. And I've got this handy dandy little. I think I got it from Pampers Chef Chopper, and I just pop it in here and chop them up. Oh, I want one of those. I have one of those. It, I think it got lost or something at some point, but I, I love those pamphlets. I want one of those and one of these. I did not bring I'm going to put one in white chocolate yeah. and watch what I do. Now I'm going to dip it in chocolate graham crackers. Mm -hmm. Oh, yum. Chocolate. Oh, my gosh. Where do you get chocolate graham crackers? Smith's? Uh, any place. Any place? Yeah. Oh my God. I've been off sugar for way too long. <laughs> well, get back. I need to bring sugar back into my life so I don't miss out on this stuff. So let's look at the magic of television. By the way, I don't want to jinx ourselves, but our mic issue has just We don't have one. They hear us fine. You hear oh, us great, man. right, Tani? Thank goodness. These are the strawberries that I did last night. So they're nice and firm. So it's time to embellish. Okay. So that is what I'm getting is that you dip them in the dark chocolate or white chocolate, depending on which you want to use. And then you refrigerate them for 15 minutes so they get nice and firm. Now I okay. did see you dip them in the nuts. Now do you do it, dip in the nuts before you go into the refrigerator? Yeah, you, if you're going to do the, the nuts or the coconut or the, the uh, graham crackers or whatever you want to embellish them with, you can do sprinkles. You do I that when the chocolate is still for, uh, wet. Okay, got it. Right okay. after you dip it, you, you uh, dip it in whatever you're going to use to embellish. Okay. But when you're, put, when you're putting the white chocolate on, you want to do that after the chocolate is hardened okay work so then i just take my little spoon well better to do this grab your chalk your strawberry by the the stem or the uh leaves and just go back and forth oh that looks so easy but it's so beautiful i thought you did something much more complicated for that oh no marla no this Easy you thing, and you want to know something? Apple Lamb sells these for five dollars a piece. Well, Roseanne, do us a favor and post your picture of these yeah. strawberries into the Nanny Bubby and into the Gather right underneath the the live stream that we have here, so everybody can see the close up. Unless you yeah. want to grab your camera when you're done. <gasps> Look at oh, how beautiful! Oh my gosh, Roseanne. Now, where do you find the best strawberries, Roseanne? I really like these. These are from Whole Foods. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, and they're organic. So look how simple that is. And you can get really crazy. You can put all kinds of decorations. Uh, like that. Well, when you get crazy, oh, they look artistic. When I get crazy, it looks like mishmash. Oh, come on. No, I really just, I, I don't have, it's funny. I'm extremely coordinated. Oh, look at that, everybody. Yay. Yeah. 
Everybody's applauding. They look so great. Look how easy it is. It's so easy. It's just so simple. Or there's something else you could do. Tell us. I've got one already. Yeah. I'm going to dip half of it in the white chocolate. Okay. So I've got a nice little tuxedo. Oh, that's oh, so how cute. cute. And that you can you can sprinkle. I'll sprinkle some chocolate on it. What a nice hostess gift or something too, if you're going to someone's house. Oh, to make that's a great idea. It's such an elegant look. Oh, with the chocolate sprinkles. And where do you get your chocolate sprinkles? The chocolate sprinkles are the graham crackers. The chocolate oh. is crushed. We need to find chocolate graham crackers. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, you should. Mm -hmm. you get them when I them? did the chocolate. I'll come back up here. When I did the chocolate graham crackers, you get a lot of dust, a lot of powder. So I put the chocolate in a great big, I'll show you. I have this nice little sieve. So I put the graham crackers in the sieve and just shaked it and got the uh, powder out and it just left this the size I want for my okay, I have a question for you. Where did you get that sieve? If you say pampered chef, I'm having a party tomorrow. <laughs> Amazon. Mm, really? Send me the link to that. Chef. The brand is Chef. Chef what? C E H C H E F N. Chefin. Chefin. Oh. You Chefin. see it? Yeah. Yeah. It That's even lovely. has a cute little thing that comes off the side and you can scrape. That's awesome. I need that. Very cute. I need that. I, I need these not, and I need to get that. the fine, the fine out and just get the, the uh, chopped nut. I love so it. it. Worked well. Love that. That's a good pro tip. Do you see how many pro tips already? Five pro yes. tips for oh. Dan. Let me tell you something else. Um, when you, you refrigerate it, what I've learned is the best thing to do is put it on a, a platter or a, a, a wherever you a container but line it either with paper towels or um, parchment paper or even like cookie or cupcake holders. Oh, I, that would be pretty. pretty a little bit. Um, oh, you broke up, no. Roseanne, say it again. Pardon me? You broke up, say it again. Okay, paper towels, parchment paper or cupcake holders. I. I do either paper towels or parchment paper. The, the strawberries will tend to sweat a little bit in the refrigerator and that catches this, this, the little juice that runs off. I also found that for me at least, it's better not to cover it because if you're covering it, if you put it in an airtight, it's gonna sweat a little bit. All right. I love that. Thank you so much. That was Yay. Thank you. We lost Mary. We lost Mary. Oh, oh my gosh. Okay. All right. Okay. Did Mary? The, so is that it? Is that it, Roseanne? That's it. Okay. Thank you so much. This You're was welcome. Really come true for me to have you. Hey, Roseanne, do me a favor. Yes. Grab your camera stand. I have to do this. I'm so sorry. Grab your camera stand. And you know what I ask? Say, Go into that living room of yours and show everybody that painting above your piano if it's what? still there. Oh. No, you guys, it makes me cry. And I also drank wine, so I'm going to cry. But <laughs> what? look at, I, you have to see this, you guys. Do you see that? Go in tighter on that picture in the middle, Roseanne. Okay, Roseanne. Okay. Uh, Turn I'm your phone. standing over the piano, so it's hard. Turn your phone to uh, portrait rather than landscape. <laughs> that, there you go. Now zoom in. Now go in tight on that. Go in tight. Go in tight. Uh, Roseanne. The camera's in my way. I mean, the piano's in my way. Oh, all right. Well, look at this, you guys. How long were you painting when you painted that? Oh, my gosh. A uh, little over a year. Wow. She never painted in her life and suddenly took it up. Just 
just just like you know do you know how to zoom in on a camera with your fingers you know roseanne what i'm talking about so you can yeah yeah. yeah make that a tighter shot just so everybody can see it's not i can't do it i can't reach it okay, to do stop it stop right there stop Over right there she that's wanted beautiful. an award for this that's she beautiful an award for this and if you could, go, if you went into her art room and saw what she's doing now, you just simply would not believe it. This was Good. a year into her painting. Roseanne, I'm I'm, I'm so going over to the little boy. Okay, hey what? Marla, I'm gonna have to go. Um, it's dinner time here too, and my husband's getting hungry, and I'm gonna have to pop off. All right, but thank Chris. you for everything. Well, Chris, thank you so much for sharing you with us. And thank you, Roseanne, and everybody else. I really appreciate oh it. I'll be anxious to see the Jenny, recipes. Before you, go, before you go, look at this little boy. She I know. Did. I see it. It's fabulous. Her, her paintings yeah, are beautiful. Oh, thank you, Roseanne. Bye, Susan. You have a great Bye, day. Bye, guys. See Bye. you. You too. Bye. Okay. All right. Okay. I turned it off. Oh, you too. Yes. <laughs> All right. Okay, Tani. Here you go. Last thing. Tani, you're the only This one. is our big moment. Big moment. The fun moment. I'm okay. with you. Oh. <laughs> oh my gosh, there we go. Oh, my bottle's way and too small. And that is lips right there. <laughs> yeah, that was too too little. It was way. Well, the recipe calls for half a cup. I'm pretty sure I put in usually around a cup or two cups. Oh. I really love Grand Marnier. I do too. It's the I first thing I ever learned to drink, and I used to set it on fire. Wow. Well, you know, I learned when I lived in Vail, Colorado, that Vail has the highest Grand Marnier consumption of anywhere <laughs> in the world. Really? They, it's a like a thing. big thing there at the bars to do Grand Marnier shots. And to light it on fire. Yes. Okay, so here comes the... Okay. How so, that softened. Very nice. Yeah, so we're still kind of softening this. We're going to make our sauce for the lasagna, which is kind of a white sauce. We'll let this sit and cook. So to start that, let's see. You can learn this better. We're gonna melt our butter and then we're gonna make a roux out of the butter and flour. And what is that? What is what? The green. That's gonna go in this later. But what is it? Oh, it's um, chopped sage and parsley. Oh, love that. Okay. Yes. So, and what is this? Is this from that um, commercial on TV about the wooden stuff? No, I just love beautiful wooden spoons. Oh. And I saw that one and I liked the color. I do too. And I, I like wooden spoons that have a flat edge like that. Like if you hold it up where there's an edge and a corner right here, because you can get in the corners of your pots and pans. I love that. So is this for all intents and purposes? Can you zoom in on this? Mm -hmm. so it's, it's finished. It's finished. Yep. So, it, and it's got the apple showing and the pear mm -hmm. and the cranberries. Oh my God, this is absolutely And it, honest, it really does taste better. Like it has a day or two to sit in the refrigerator. Oh, mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it just is phenomenal. And look how thick this is. I just this. find, Tani, it's unbelievable. What? I just tasted mine. It yeah. is unbelievable. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm so glad. Oh my gosh. I mean, it's that right there is my favorite part of Thanksgiving, I think, is making the cranberry relish. I, it just smells all so right, good. Belay's go. getting some. Can we all give Belay a hand for always being here? Yay! Nice Thank you guys, guys both. Welcome. Thank you. Don't burn your mouth. Mm -hmm. mm. So good. Mm. Isn't you will never people that don't like cranberry sauce have definitely just never needs more tasted cranberry. this. <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> it's so good. Turkey. Yes. Well, so, I so have good. a little turkey with my cranberry sauce. You know so what? It's good. really good on sandwiches the next day oh, yeah. with oh. the turkey and. And this. what kind of bread do you use for your sandwiches the next day? Um, I actually am partial to the Hawaiian sweet bread. Oh, oh yeah. so addictive. I cannot oh get God. enough sugar ever. That's cheating. I know. <laughs> okay, so we're going to make a roux here out of our flour and butter. I love making a roux. There's something about making a roux. Because you're very patient. No, patient. You are. You're patient with cooking. Sometimes. 
I, I was not patient when I said, Mom, go in the other room. Do you want me to go in the other room? Yes, go in the other room. And bless Tom, he did. Well, he better. He, he's like, fine, I will go in the other room. He was so tired. The thought of getting up and walking, I think, overwhelmed him. I know. Him. We, were try we were doing a mic check, and I needed him to go in the other room to see if it was working. And he's like, do you want me to go in the other room? And I'm like, yes, please. So you want me to go in the other room? <laughs> yes, I do. I want you to go in the other room. Okay. So do you want me to go in the other room? Yes, I want you to go in the other room. What don't you get? Get in the other room. <laughs> oh, my God. You got to love when they're such good sports, though, and they go along with our stuff. And they, they just fine. They go in the other room. How many times do you have to ask? <laughs> I'm sorry you had to see that, actually. <laughs> you know, sometimes it's... It's nice to see that other people have the same stuff. After 40 years, I mean, I'm allowed, right? Exactly. And he's sitting there thinking, how has he made it 40 years? Okay, so here's the rue. I love that. Okay, so let's see. I'll read it to you. Um, yeah. Whisk in the flour with the milk. Yeah. Okay, I think we need to cook our rue a little bit more. Rue is kind of one of those things that I think, the first time I ever made it was at cooking school in New Orleans. Oh, New Orleans. Yes. You went to cooking school? I did. Well, it was like a one-day cooking school. Oh. But it was wonderful, and I learned a lot, part of which was how to make roux. Okay. And they'll tell you in certain recipes, like, do you want it to be, like, this, I think, it, it shouldn't be white. It needs to have some very subtle tinge of Is that cooking. right? You don't want it to smell like flour. So if you're cooking for your family and you it has no smell so it doesn't smell like flour so this is fine for doing the white sauce because you don't want any brown in it if i was doing like a country gravy or something i would probably cook it a oh. little bit more until it was like a light peanut butter oh wow. but and what cooking school was this that you went to the new orleans school of cooking oh yeah. who knew there was such a thing so i smell nothing it's all, the important thing is, is you don't want it to smell like flour. If it smells like flour still, you haven't right. cooked out the flour. Kind of like the, the pumpkins, right? If yes. they smell like raw pumpkins, exactly. you haven't cooked them long enough. So now we're going to add our milk. Great and then we're going to... Yeah. Okay. Wow. We're going to cook and whisk. Does the milk have to be like room temperature or... It's okay if it's cold. <laughs> oh, no. I took it out. I, I'm a little paranoid about dairy, I think. Like, I always keep dairy in the refrigerator until the last second. If I see it's been out all afternoon, I probably will throw it away. I yeah. just, I, and I've never gotten sick or anything. I just, I don't know, somewhere along the way, somebody scared me. So do we need to put anything else in this for this? Sauce. Okay. Uh, have a quart sauce. Oh, no. One minute. Whisk and flour. And cook. Okay. Add milk in a stream. Whisking. Add bay leaf and cook to a boil. You have bay leaf? No. I do. I knew you would. I know. I do. And oh. Okay. So I think our filling is coming along nicely. There's a small one and there's a bigger one. So together that makes one. Okay. So we are supposed way, to bring this to a boil. Do you know they say that an actual sauce. if you put bay leaf in beans, if you're cooking beans, the bay leaf actually keeps you from getting gas. Really? Yeah. I didn't really? know. I didn't either. Look at her, uh, her stove hood. That's kind of cool. Oh, that's, that's pretty. Cool. I like that. I like the low. My stove hood at home is so low that if I walked into the side of it, it would hit me right in the eye. <laughs> tall people problems. I was going to say, <laughs> I, I knew the previous owners. I'm like, clearly the husband wasn't doing any cooking. So do you add salt and pepper to this on any level? I don't know. Does the recipe say to? I probably would because I think Whiskey you should add salt and white pepper and remove from heat. 
Now I decided a while ago, the reason you use white pepper usually is it's a slightly lighter flavor, but it also doesn't color your sauce. Right. Unless you're serving something to me, presenting it that pepper flex would be right. such a- But I like showing it too. I decided that too. I decided that showing pepper in I even like your pepper. white sauce, I yeah. do too, and I like to show So I stopped using white pepper. There you go. I'm with you. So if we have a little bit of salt and pepper, we can whisk into this and then we'll okay. keep cooking until we, we have a sauce. There's your salt. I'm your van of white. Thank well, you. This is so nice. There we go. Okay. And here comes the pepper. You can tell how warm it's getting. Well, that's okay. It'll be spicy like us. <laughs> I am a spicy girl. Okay, I swear my hands are clean. I just need to gauge temperature. Okay. So sometimes your hands really are your best cooking tool. Yes. There's just no substitute. There's just not. There's just not. Oh my gosh, this is so amazing. Beautiful. So if you want to just keep whisking this so it doesn't burn. I absolutely will. We are going to add our toasted hazelnuts and herbs to the butternut squash filling mixture. Wow. We're working our way through all these plastic containers. <laughs> oh, this is on. Her. And this is the sage and parsley and the toasted hazelnuts. And how did you toast your hazelnuts? At Trader Joe's. Are they <laughs> Yes. Oh. You can, at Trader Joe's, you can buy the hazelnuts already toasted. So all you have to do is um, either use your Pampered Chef handy chopper or throw them in a little food processor or something like that. But it is a lot easier. The first time I made this, I did not know that Trader Joe's had those. And I bought the whatever the hazelnuts and I had to roast them and peel it. I would never, never, ever do that again if I could avoid it. There so, are some shortcut shortcuts worth taking. Yes. No one gets extra credit for that. For I don't using. think. No. So this is our filling. It looks so pretty. It does. And yummy. Yummy, yummy, yummy. So as soon as we get our sauce together, we will be ready to assemble our wonderful and so lasagna. one of the things that she is doing, who's making, is anybody making the butternut squash lasagna with us? Tawny, are you making that? No, she's Nobody not. wanted to tackle it. But I just want to say she's using, just for the future, because you have the recipe, for the future, she's using um, lasagna noodles that are the pre-cook or the non cook They're the no boil. Again, obviously Trader Joe's is one of my favorite stores. Yeah. So no boil lasagna noodles. It, I actually like them a little bit better than the boil ones because the ones that you have to boil, if you even slightly overcook them, it really does have a big impact on your dish. Yes. And with the no boil ones, they basically are perfect al dente no matter what you do. Isn't that awesome? This is not heating. Why is so it not, it's thickening? not thickening? It's hot, it's at 460. Maybe we need a little more flour. Oh no, it hasn't even started to boil yet. Uh oh. So it'll thicken as soon as we. This is when it's teaching you patience. <laughs> yes, for sure. Rosanna, it's saying you... I will not be rushed. Are you still doing more strawberries? I just finished. Oh, oh no, wait, show them to the camera. Pick them up and show them to us. Show them closer. Oh, oh, they look so pretty. I, I love them with a snatter. Oh, so beautiful. Thank you for that. And you know, I, I feel like, you know, there's people that come to Thanksgiving that do not want to do a lot of sugar. And that is those strawberries because dark chocolate has very little sugar in them. Mm -hmm. right. And it's such a great after dinner treat. With a glass of Gar Grand Marnier and you're all set to roll. Yes. Absolutely right. Everything's better with Grand Marnier. Everything's better with butter. Yeah, that too. <laughs> Oop, we lost bees. There we go. Hello. Hello. 
Okay, well, you see this one? I don't know. Lower it. I put some sprinkles over. Oh, how pretty. Right. Those look so delicious. Absolutely. Love. Do you need my address? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is it starting to thicken? It's a little bit. It's just, well, it's starting to steam, and that's a good sign. Yeah. It took a while to heat up, didn't it? Yeah. I think it's because, well, no telling. No telling. <laughs> <laughs> My neighbor and I it's walk because who knows. every morning, and what I find is when we don't understand something that's going on in the neighborhood, we make up a story about it. We we pretend we know, just so you and can. we completely make up a story about it to satisfy our like your need to have explanations. Our need to have explanation, and then we move on. I love that. A lot of people do. I yeah, I never noticed that about me before, but I'm one of those. <laughs> Roseanne, if you okay, need our, if you need sage, I just want to show you guys, Tawny, if you need sage. This, this came out of Nanny Bubby's garden. Mm -hmm. Look at the sage. Isn't oh my it? gosh. I have so much sage I could feed the entire city. Isn't that beautiful? That's fabulous. Yeah. It's incredible. And it smells so good. I'm not a big sage person, but because it grew so hardy. In my um, garden this year, I'm finding reasons to use it, including decorating my table because sage like is so plentiful for Thanksgiving, <laughs> right? So I like to decorate my table with things yeah. that are in and like thyme like and basil and sage because and it's in the food grade. So that's that I use it for table decoration. Extra. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh I, I was just telling Delay that it may be taking a little bit longer because the recipe calls for milk, but knowing me, I probably used half and half or heavy cream because I could for this. And I thought it would just make it that much creamier. Well, it will, but do you think that's why it's not thickening? I think it's just taking longer. Oh, okay, but why? Um, because the milk is not as heavy as cream. I think if we had used heavy cream, we'd have so it's our starting sauce now. by now. I can it's starting to get thickened. Well, it'd be a good time for us to take a set. There you go. Did my husband leave? Cheers. He came back in. Oh. Well, he was working out probably for an hour and he went to get a, a shower. Oh, it's starting to thicken. You can really see it now, guys. Okay. Oh, yeah. It's beautiful. Won't be long now. Now, I'm assuming you take out the bay leaves before yes. you. Yes. Yeah. Not that I've ever tested this, but my understanding is if you always want to remove the bay leaves because it can perforate your esophagus if you swallow them because oh, they're really? so sharp. That's why. Is that right? I have, I don't know that this has ever happened to anybody. I read about it probably maybe when I was in high school. I mean, who reads stuff like that when you're in high school? <laughs> no telling. <laughs> uh, I was reading a cookbook, I'm sure, that said, You were reading a cookbook oh my gosh. in high school? I learned to cook when I was very young. Oh my goodness. And I, I actually really enjoyed it. Marla? Yes. No, no. Come say hi, hello. everybody. Come say hello. Come say hello. Roseanne, hello. look who's here. And hi, Connie. He's hi the, there. These are our two that are left. Are you making me dinner here? Oh, yes. yes. Is this we, my dinner for today? Well, look at these. Um, we tasted your Brussels sprouts. Brussels sprouts. And oh. I know. I hope you like Brussels sprouts. I love them. Oh. All right, it looks pretty good. Look at those straw. Oh my God, Tony, look at those. Oh, oh my right. God. Oh. Roseanne, we're not kidding about my address. Hello. Yeah, all right. We're totally not kidding about the address. By the way, Roseanne and Tony have become very good friends via you are my two hey, like yeah. top followers every day. And oh. it's 3 p.m. It's time for dinner with Nanny Bubby. That's no so more nice. dinner dreads, right, guys? All oh. right. Totally. This is coming along just a little bit. So when this is ready, it should be the consistency of like um, maybe an Alfredo sauce right. or something. You know, it needs to have a little bit of body to it. You don't want it too runny. So we will just be patient and keep whisking. 
until yeah. it tells us it's done. And by the way, this is on hot. Like it is. Yeah, I don't know. It, it's just doing. Marla, for the the squash soup, mm -hmm. you have to wait for it, and then you put it in the bowls. Yeah, well, finished. you put it in the bowls just to serve it, just like you would a regular ceramic bowl. You'll right. put the butternut squash soup into the bowls as you serve it. Yeah, well, I can't. And I think that out. those will will keep. Actually, I, I really do think they will keep yeah. until Thanksgiving, right? So. Can't freeze them, but I think they'll keep okay in the refrigerator. It's almost there. <laughs> We're being very French and patient here. Yes. <laughs> what happened to Olivia? Did she leave? Yeah. Yeah, she gave up on us. Oh. I think she's taking a nap. But she's my sous chef. So oh. we're, you know. Awesome. So how old is Olivia? Uh, 20, I don't know, eight. I guess. <laughs> and how old's your son? Okay. Uh, 30. Give it a taste. 30. So she's cool. making a, a Nutella, Nutella pie, Nutella pumpkin pie. Nutella? Nutella? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. It's Nutella and pumpkin and heavy cream. And I don't know. I bought the stuff. <laughs> oh, my God. Connie, you have to post that in the, the Gather okay. Media book. Right? Exactly. That, and the recipe. After, after I'm sure it's good. Okay. <laughs> so Andrea was going to be here today, but her mom is in a nursing home and she goes to see her every Sunday. So Yeah. I haven't seen her since I saw her, I think, sometime in the 80s. You know, I want to tell you a strange story. And I mean, this is on Facebook, so people are going to tune in. And if they laugh, people to know our story. Yeah, if they last this long, they'll hear the story. But let me <laughs> like, let me tell you this, and people might really appreciate this. Let me close the chat here. I don't know how to close. Wait a minute. Hold on. Oh. Okay. Let me see. Close the chat. Because I can't see you. The chat was over your face. So the day of whoops, 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 whoops. Whoop, where's that? Oh. Oh, right yeah, don't burn anything. Okay, well, it finally got thick. Hold on. Hold on, and I'll tell Hopefully you the story. We didn't burn it. No, we did not. So, so Veronica, oh, there I am. Like, we lost everybody. Help me. Help me. <laughs> We're here. Okay, there we go. Okay, I lost the visual of you, but you didn't lose oh. me. So um, the day of Veronica Paskey's funeral, yep. I literally was thinking to myself, I really wish that I had Andrea's Sorry. contact information because Andrea would want to go. Because Veronica, Andrea, and I were all so close in junior high and high school. And I kept thinking, gosh, I, I mean, I was so focused and kept thinking, I wish I could find Andrea and reach out to her in some way. So I was getting ready to leave for the funeral, Tawny. I was getting ready to leave for Veronica's funeral. And the receptionist rings me in my office and says, Marla, Andrea is here to see you. Well, I always called her Andy, right? Uh, I didn't know her yep. Andrea. So I said, who? And she said, Andrea Adabashi, which I know her because I've sent her Christmas Christmas card every day, every year for, since high school, but I didn't know her telephone or a way to reach out to her for the funeral. And I walk out to the reception area and there she's standing. Wow. Oh my God, Andy, oh. I wanted to reach out to you. Did you know about Veronica? And she didn't. And I said, oh my God, will you come with me? You know, to, she said that she was dropping off some printing and apparently an artist in our company had reached out and gotten a bid from her husband's company and actually bid out this job. And she brought the job and was dropping it off. And she said, let me drop it off. I know Marla. And um, they walked, she walked in and I said, oh my wow. God, isn't that crazy? Talk about the universe and see mm -hmm. that was amazing. Okay. Okay. We're ready to do our lasagna. Okay. Belay uh, your V instead. There you go. Okay. You're back. 
Where is okay, so these noodles are already soft. Is that how no, they're, they're not? They're, and I'm going to show them to you. So they're called no boil and see. Okay, so they're hard, like they're hard. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I discovered these several uh, years ago. Doesn't matter. Um, of course. And I have <laughs> never used anything else since because the process of. Oh shit! Sorry. <laughs> Some more wine. <laughs> She's over there. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry about that. I'm glad I didn't get you. Uh, it's good for your skin. It's okay. Awesome. <laughs> okay. Now I use these loaf pans just because they fit the noodles. And then if you make one, because again, it is really rich and I don't usually say that about everything. In fact, usually when people tell me something's rich, I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sure it's going to be I fine. I can eat anything. I can handle it. This real genuinely is rich between the cream sauce, the squash, oh, um, so the beautiful. cheese, everything. So what we're going to do is take a little bit of sauce, oh, this sauce is in beautiful. the bottom of each of your loaf pans. And then just kind of do. I'm continuing that. to do this to keep the skin from forming on the top. Oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to Oh, those lasagna noodles are the perfect See? size. You don't have to adjust or do anything. And then when you get done, you can just take this out of the loaf pan and put it in the freezer. And I have kept them in the freezer for up to a year. Wow. And it, it's, if you put in the food saver and vacuum seal it, it is just as good later as it was that day. So let's see. Oh, here, I'll help you. Okay, so what's, so then we do sauce again. Okay, so sauce, let's see, between, between cheeks, spread two thirds cup sauce and one third of the filling. And then okay. sprinkle with a heaping half cup of cheese. So we need sauce, filling, then cheese. Yep. Do you guys ever repeat something in your head like sauce, filling, cheese, sauce, filling, cheese? Um, no, but I will now. Oh. <laughs> that's, that's how I remember my pattern of what I'm doing. Yes. So you don't lose it. Okay. It's in bay leaf out so we don't pierce our esophagus. <laughs> and I have no idea if that's true. I don't either. It, it was one of those things that I heard and I didn't want to test it out. Okay. Mm. Mm. The sauce is delish, you guys. I just bit my finger. Okay. Oh my gosh. Look at that. Does that look gorgeous or what? And the other thing is you can do this, um, like make the filling in the sauce and then assemble it later. Like I realized that this recipe is kind of a lot to do all at once. And so I have made it in stages. I'm really well, sorry. The loaf pan thing, I think is like one of the best ideas of the day. I, oh, thank just you. Not, like if we make a big tray of any kind of lasagna or anything big, Yes. And it occurred uh -huh. to me to use a loaf pan. That's perfect. Well, if you would like to further take a shortcut, I use the foil loaf pans and I did sure. them Thanksgiving last year. And then I food savored them right in the foil loaf pans. Oh, you sure. did? Yes. Mm -hmm. and, That's great. And then I, and in fact, just like a week or two ago, I took one out of the freezer, took it out of the food saver wrap, put it in the oven in its foil pan, covered with foil and baked it. Oh my God. Is oh, she the bomb? It was fabulous. Is she the bomb or what? <laughs> yeah, that's great. Speaking of food saver, Tanya, yes. did you know that you can put these bags in your food saver after you've opened them? And it'll no. See oh, that is genius. I did not know that. I just tried it a few weeks ago. It works perfectly. Oh, wow. Look at us. Are we amazing? Exchanging we all amazing? kinds of valuable information. Look at that. Okay. Let's see. 
Well, do you want a big spoon? I think I'm a hand cooker sometimes. Okay. <laughs> I, I figure as is long that, as they're clean. Is that a thing, hand cooking? Wow. Can, you want a little bit more throw in there? No, because we're going to um, make sure we get plenty of lasagna layer in. I also want to test this. I'm testing the filling. Somebody should test it. Hmm. That's amazing. And I always think I need more noodles than I do. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, I'll sauce again. The nuts? Oh, the nuts. Mm -hmm. Aren't they just that they scream fall? Mm -hmm. They kill it. This is unbelievable. Oh my gosh. And we might have some leftover filling. Not really. <laughs> <laughs> Not if I have a spoon. <laughs> or we will have lunch for the crew. Totally. Oh. So pretty. <sighs> Gorgeous. Just so pretty and festive. Oh my gosh. Go for it. You can finish it off. Okay. No leftover filling, darn it. How long have you been making this? Annually? For Thanksgiving? Um, yeah, for probably like five years or so. Oh. It was another one of those recipes I found online. I'm like, oh, this sounds good. So it's become a tradition for you to make it every year? I think it is for me. Um, the kit. I love it more than me and my mom and I both really, really love it. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure the kids oh, love it, it as much they, as um, I do. Yeah. Oh, I forgot the cheese. You can't forget the cheese. You cannot forget the cheese. <laughs> cheese is awesome. Cheese is what everything. What is life without cheese? It's not life. Very boring. Yeah. Is it just Parmesan? Yeah. Okay, so now I always think you need to top it off with your noodle and sauce thing. And I'm gonna put a little extra, now this is always fun. If you wanna break these evenly, put your thumbs in the middle and use the leverage to crack it down. Oh the my God, what a perfect Oop, cut, uh, that was amazing. And now we're gonna do the same thing here because we're all about symmetry. All right. Look at that. And that was learned the hard way. <laughs> yeah. It does not always go quite that smoothly. And then on the and top. Then we're gonna do a little more cheese on the top and then the rest of the sauce. Oh, cool. I will get it ready for you. And what is in here? Garlic. Garlic? Yes. Okay. Oops. Like kids, you don't want them to be uneven. <laughs> God forbid. Okay. Now you're going to do your sauce over the top. Okay. And now just to finish it off. Oh my goodness. And let it sink into the nooks and crannies. Okay. That sure did thicken. Oh, it did. Yeah. It's our reward for patience. Oh. Marla. <laughs> what? Did I have too much wine? Yeah. <laughs> okay. That's okay. Oh, there. All right. That's not uneven. <laughs> We're just <laughs> aiming it to go down. Tanya's not a perfect cook. She doesn't mind. No, I know she doesn't. It's just funny. <laughs> I like two glasses of wine, Nanny Bo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at this beautiful. Oh my gosh. Look at me. Oh okay. my god. Look at that. Yay. Right hand. Yeah. Everybody's applauding. Thank you. Okay, I'm gonna rinse my hands. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Thank you. 
beautiful. Our noodle had two glasses oh my, of wine. Yes, it did. Oh my gosh, I'm picking up off the counter. So then, you, and so then we're just going one. to put it on a baking sheet and cook it. But you can cover this and then bake it like tomorrow or the next day, right? You can, yeah. Yeah, you don't have to bake I it. I probably, out. because of the no boil noodles, would uh -huh. bake it, but um, just until it was just cooked through and then reheat it with foil on top and finish it to brown it in the oven later. And always put a little parchment paper on top so you yes, foil yes, it. Yes, which I don't okay. know about, so. Yeah, there you go. I'm All right. To continue to be learning new things. Well, that's it, everybody. Thank you for being here, Tani. I hope you enjoyed this. You know what? It was so worth the wait till the end because I wasn't even going to make that dish. Um, I won't make it for Thanksgiving, but I will. And I always pick well, up. Well, we'll trade you with strawberries. <laughs> <laughs> right, we should do that. We should have like a, a community, a CSA for just what we all cook, right? Yep. I always wanted to. Yeah. Well, it was so fun cooking with you all. I hope you have a wonderful yeah. Thanksgiving. Yes, happy Thanksgiving. Yeah, thank you. Love you. Love thank you so much. And thank you for being there every day for the No More Dinner Dreads. So appreciate it very, very much. I love yeah. you guys. And shall we all do this together? Be like, come yeah. over here. Oh. Ready? Do we hug? Count no. three. <laughs> One, two, three. And let's spread and love like butter. butter. <laughs> so cute. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Happy Thanksgiving. Bye. Bye.